Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. Solus has released their fourth version, codenamed Fortitude this week, and it comes with a few welcome enhancements. It also marks an important step in that distro's life, coming out on top of leadership and governance issues that delayed its evolution. Let's take a look at what's new. Budgie. Solus is the flagship for the Budgie desktop environment, and Solus 4 ships with Budgie 10.5, the latest version to date. It comes with some enhancements to its applets. The Budgie menu now shows each app's entry only once when headers are turned off, and it tries to remove the sundry category by moving apps to the other category instead. The Caffeine applet has been added to allow you to disable locking, suspending, or hibernating your computer while you're working. Finally, the task list has received a lot of attention. The popover for each app has been largely revamped, allowing you to close all instances and windows of an application, and making each window's controls directly accessible from the popover menu to maximize and maximize, set as always on top, or move between workspaces. It also displays a favorite icon to add each app to the taskbar, and a plus icon allows you to create a new instance of that application. Finally, a nice refinement has been added. Scrolling up or down on an icon in the taskbar allows you to minimize or restore the window of an application. The popover also supports additional actions for each app, for example, opening a new private browsing window on Firefox. These changes make managing windows in Budgie a breeze, up to the point where I didn't even need a traditional expose overview mode I usually use on Elementary OS and GNOME. Raven. Raven is Budgie's notification and widget panel. You can access it by clicking the notification icon or its dedicated icon in the notification area. Solus's developers have been hard at work on this specific piece of software. The calendar widget now supports displaying week numbers. You can activate that by using the Budgie desktop settings. The sound applet is now divided in two different ones for output and input. It also allows you to raise volume past 100% if you want to. Each app will also have its volume displayed here, so you can mute them or tweak the volume for each of them without leaving your desktop. The notifications also work better, allowing you to clear notifications for a specific app, instead of being forced to remove all notifications at once. That's kind of a basic feature, but it was needed, so it's welcome. Look and feel. Solus 4 defaults to the Plata Noir GTK theme for this release. I must admit it looks good, with rounded highlights and button shapes, and a vivid blue color that contrasts well with the dark background. The theme seems to use pure black though, which I find a bit too dark, and makes everything a bit less legible. I would have preferred a dark color that is not pure 100% black, since it tends to absorb light too much on an interface and distracts the eye. Solus uses the Papyrus icon theme, which I learned to love while using a derivative of it on Manjaro, and it looks good here as well. The icons and the theme work well together, and everything is nicely animated and fluid. Solus 4 actually tweaks things a bit in the Budgie desktop settings. They decided to blacklist a few themes that are provided by default by GTK, such as Advaita, Clearlux, or the High Contrast theme. Their reasoning is that these themes are designed for GNOME and GNOME Shell, and they do not provide a satisfying experience on Budgie. These themes won't show up in Budgie's desktop settings as a result, but they will still be accessible from GNOME tweaks for people who really want to use them. Some icons also have been blacklisted, such as the Breeze icon theme. Solus 4 also allows you to pick in which corner of the screen you'd like your notification pop-ups to show up, instead of having them in the top right automatically. That is a small feature, but it participates in the enhanced customization of the environment. Other changes. Other changes in Solus 4 include the ability to center new windows on screen, which is absolutely a must-have, since having windows pop up in a random place has always made me cringe. Night light can be disabled when a window is full screen, for example when watching a movie. And the window focus can now be set to change when the pointer enters or leaves a window. Solus 4 comes with newer versions of its core applications, such as Firefox 65, LibreOffice 6.2.1.2, Rhythmbox 3.4.3, and Thunderbird 60.5.2. I actually like that this distro comes with the bare minimum set of software, except for the full LibreOffice suite, which I think is overkill for most people. Including Writer, Calc, and Impress should be enough for the majority of users. HexChat is here as well, and I still can't understand why any distro would include it by default, but I'll stop complaining about this, it's not a big deal. 
Solus 4 ships with kernel 4.20.16, which is great news for AMD users since it greatly enhances support for Raven 2, Vega 10 and Vega 20 cards. This kernel, coupled to Mesa 19, means that drivers and graphics support should be the best it can be for AMD and Intel users. Impressions Solus is pretty lightweight. It's set on XFC's level, but still on the light side. On my machine, it was speedy, everything opened quickly, and RAM consumption stayed low. Since the desktop doesn't have many bells and whistles and uses simple animations for its Raven panel, it all felt minimalistic and smooth. Its default application selection is good, even though I must admit Thunderbird is not my favorite email client, and in general, the distro has a stylish look and feel, maybe with too much pure black, but it's nothing that I wouldn't be able to adapt to. A few of these improvements didn't seem new to me. I used Budgie on Manjaro, and I feel they already had some of these Budgie improvements, most notably the taskbar popovers and the newer audio widgets. Still, Manjaro Budgie shipped with some non-functional applets, and its menu did bug me a bit, refusing to let me type an app's name when pressing Super if another window was open. None of these problems happen here on Solus 4, and you can clearly see that this DE is very well integrated in the distribution. Solus uses its own package manager called EOPKG and actually packages its own applications, so it's not based on a Debian or Red Hat distro. This means that software support could be a little bit more spotty. If it's not in the repositories, chances are you'll have to build it yourself. Fortunately, the repos seem very well stocked, and as I searched for specific applications, there wasn't much I wasn't able to find and install. If something is not available there, Solus supports Flatpak and Snap, so you shouldn't be left out of anything new or any important third-party app. All in all, Solus 4 seems like a nice, stable base. Budgie is a great DE, even though it still lacks a few features. An overview mode, such as the one in Elementary OS or Deepend, should probably be a priority to cater to users used to work like that. And it still doesn't have a huge library of applets for its panels. But it can be customized quite a bit with any number of panels, any order with the applets, and Raven is something I miss when I move to other desktops, especially for controlling sound and sound input. For current Solus users, just run your updates and you'll automatically move to Solus 4. For people interested in the distro, I'd say give it a go. The only thing you might want to check before installing is whether your favorite applications are available in Solus's own software center or through Flatpak, just to make sure you're not missing anything. I hope you guys enjoyed this tour of Solus 4 features, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye!